Imagine if you could make something impossible. What it will be? Think about something. If you could make something appear, something disappear, something levitate, what it will be? Do you have it? Yeah? Gentlemen over there, you have something? Well, think about it. Keep it on your mind. I will ask you later. For me, if I ask myself the same question, I would like to dis make disappear this object. It's a PAT plastic bottle. Probably you are quite familiar with it, right? It's really commonly used. But probably what you are not familiar with it is that every time that we throw a plastic bottle, what we are throwing, in order to produce this one liter plastic bottle, it consumes 162 centiliters of oil and up to seven liters of water. That's a lot, right? That's for a plastic bottle. 80% of the time when we use plastic bottles, they don't get recycled. And the times that get recycled, it doesn't recycle in another plastic bottles. It gets downcycled with a lot of energy cost in another product with less value. So with my friend Pierre and my friend Guillaume, we want to come up with an alternative to plastic bottle to make it vanish, to make it disappear. So we come up with this. We call it OO, the water blob. So basically, it's a water bottle that you can eat. Uh, it's a membrane that contains water. Membranes are commonly used in nature. So nature uses a lot of membranes, if you think an egg or in a fruit, because the material works quite well, because only works in traction most of the time. So you need really small amount of material. The material that we use for this membrane is an alginate and calcium, so they are natural materials. And it's a trick that we found out there. It's not our own trick. The technique is called spherification. And it had been commonly used uh, on the culinary industry since the 50s to make these little balls of fake caviar that grandma sometimes put on Christmas. So, um, yeah. Lately, a Spanish chef, Cal Ferranadia, brought this technique into the high cuisine to make sophisticated dishes. But what we want to do with it is packaging, because we think it could be a really simple packaging. It could be extremely cheap, it could be biodegradable, and it could be even eatable. So we came up with this idea some months ago, and we share it, uh, and we license it with Creative Commons, so we put a video on the internet. And the most amazing part of the, of, of, the pro, of, the, <laughs> of the project is that a lot of people start to replicate and to start to make their own recipes at home. Uh, so, and quite successfully, and with different kind of tips, trips. So on the left hand side, I think this girl has over 3 million views. Uh, this is one of the major shows in Japan here in Germany. So it started to become quite successfully, and the people can make it at home. I'm sure no one of you could make a plastic bottle at home, right? But a lot of people can make uh, this edible water bottle at home. So that's all. I think we have all for everyone uh, upstairs. You can try to, to have a go in terms of making and trace of, of, uh, of tasting it. So, but what, what happened with the water bottles that we already have consumed? If you think how many water bottles have you consumed in the last year? Could you make an estimation? So if you think as well that a water bottle, it lasts 700 years until it decomposes, we still have a lot of plastic bottles there, right? So with my friend uh, Maciek, he's an architect, as I am, we decided to convert it into something else. We don't want it to recycle. We want to use it as it is for other purposes. So we come up with this trick uh, that is that we put on uh, a lot of plastic bottles on a bag. Um, we suck the air of the bag, and whatever is inside becomes rigid. So with this uh, little trick, uh, we decide to make a building. Uh, you see, it's quite rigid, and whenever you put air inside, it's, it becomes flexible again. So we collect a lot of plastic bottles in different cities. It's an it's experience that we did in different cities around Europe. We put it in really big plastic bags, and we start to give them shapes. And when we have the shape, we suck the air and it becomes a rigid structure. So we start with really simple shapes. This is some experience that we did in Poland. The previous was in Venice. And this is one of the latest structure. The fun part of this, uh, of this building is whenever you have a shape, if you don't like it or if you want to change the shape, you just need to open the valve. And some air will come in, and you can reshape it and suck the air again and becomes a new building. But there is other problems uh, much bigger than this much bigger than plastic bottles. There is a lot of people on this planet that doesn't have access to clean water. 
uh, they don't have because they don't have neither the source, neither the distribution for it, neither the infrastructure. So a lot of people really depend on, on water trucks to deliver water for them, and it's not really efficient way to deliver water uh, because it takes a lot of energy and it's not quite efficient. So here we have a double challenge. We want, in on one hand, to make uh, to create water, drinkable water, and the other hand, to distribute to these people that doesn't have access to it. So we look about how nature does this, and if you think in the cycle of water, uh, so the water is on the sea, but it's salty, but the sun evaporates that water into water vapor, and this water vapor uh, comes into the air because it's lighter than air, and it flies over with the clouds and delivers this water. Right? But sometimes this water doesn't be delivered to these people, so we think why we cannot do this same system in a controlled way. So we come up with this idea of making a a kind of balloon, a big airship that could get into the water. It evaporates the water in the same way that solar steels work. And with this water uh, vapor or water uh, steam, it could fly because it's lighter than air. That's why clouds fly. And you could deliver with the help of the wind wherever you need it. So it looks like a little bit like this. This is one of the first uh, prototypes or, or proofs of concept, as we call it. So I, I think Google is doing something similar with Wi-Fi and Helium, but we wanted to do it with water vapor and, and water. So this is some of the proof of concepts that we did, the prototypes. What we want to do is a 200 meters uh, balloon. It seems quite big, but if you think about it, it's smaller than the Hindenburg that we did in the 30s. And it's not a crazy idea to put uh, water, uh, water water vapor inside of balloons, like the Mongo Mongolfia uh, brothers, the inventors of the balloons, they were doing it as the first experiments. The main problem for them is like they were using paper on the walls of the balloon, so it was condensing quite quickly. So this is air, the artificial cloud. But I think the main message I want to give it to you today to take home, I think if you come back to your impossible, you can come back, you have it, yeah? So I think all of you are kind of magicians here. And, and you can make this impossible happen. Uh, as Nelson Mandela was saying, everything is impossible until someone's done it. So that impossible that you have in your head, probably no one has done it. And that's why it's beautiful and someone is waiting, and that's impossible is waiting for you to make it done. So my, uh, I will encourage you to go for it, to find some, a couple of tricks on the way, some friends to share passion with you, and yeah, make it done it. Cheers. Thank you.